Omicron. Falcon hates puns and thinks that they're all wrong. One's American and one is an Aussie. Talking about StarCraft 2 and the esports scene. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. Yeah. Starcraft I like that we both two. welcomed... Mm. What? Oh, uh, mm. no, no, no. You, you go first, please. I just like that we welcomed each other to the podcast. Oh, yeah. 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 It's very welcoming to do that. Yes, indeed mm. it is. I was just going to say, while well, I put a gobstopper in my mouth. Yeah, that, good timing. Yep, yep. That StarCraft 2 is dead. Long live StarCraft 2. <laughs> So here's the funny thing about this. Like, yes, I understand what they're saying, and I get it's in maintenance mode, and it's, you know, kind of shutting the door on it, but uh, the, the videos that I post on my Brood War channel get a lot more views than the videos I post on my StarCraft II channel, and Brood War has not got a balance update since, like, 2001 or 2002. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't feel like this... Will diminish the popularity of it, but I don't. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see no. what happens. I mean, I don't think it'll matter personally, but yeah, I I think looking forward to new skins or new co-op commanders was always fun, and it's a little sad that stuff's not coming, especially in like new voice packs. I guess they're gone. Yeah, that's true. No Falcon Paladin voice pack ever, ever. It's very tragic indeed. Yeah, or Pig, or Maynard, or yeah, literally or anyone. <laughs> literally bigger anyone than me, even. Yeah. yeah. What a tragedy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> no. I'm kind of surprised there's not a Maynard one. How did that not happen? I don't know. Maybe there aren't enough Australian fans to make it worth it. I mean, probably. <laughs> I don't know. That's brutal. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, they did say they're going to do balance patches as needed, mm -hmm. which I think is good. I mean, it was kind of nice to get you know, a quarterly balance patch, and they changed some stuff, and it would change the meta. But it's just it's nice to know that if we get into a situation where it's like, this is super broken, that they're willing to go in and do some changing. Although, I don't, for some reason, and somehow, Brood War has managed to be fine. Again, last balance update, like 20 years ago, and yet the meta ebbs and flows and changes and one race looks overpowered and then another one looks overpowered and it never managed to find itself in a spot where it's like, okay, this strategy is unstoppable and now the game is ruined because this race wins everything, right? Right. So, I mean, it, it does make me wonder, like, maybe the game doesn't need balance updates. Like, maybe the community is capable of finding ways to deal with strategies that look impossible even if StarCraft doesn't give them a bailout, you know? Yeah, I think it's certainly possible. That said, I'm thinking back to the Five Racks Reaper days, and I don't know what... <laughs> like, I don't um, know what Zergs could have figured out. <sighs> the game's in a much better position now than it was then. It is, it is. And so maybe it's not fair to look at that. Maybe it's just, you know, looking at the situation now... Where it does feel like Zerg's been nerfed. Not like nerfed into the ground, but nerfed to the point that Banelings aren't quite the answer to everything that they used to be. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing some good wins by Terrans, especially against elite Zerg players recently. It's true. Right? Speaking yeah. of which, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Are you sure we're my, not going to talk about that? <laughs> my anti-segue. Take that. Uh <laughs> But you know what I mean? I just, I feel like we're in a decent spot with each of the races. Protoss looks pretty healthy in a lot of ways. And mm. yeah, maybe this is a good spot. I am, I'm really curious to see what happens the next time there's a strategy that looks unstoppable from any of the races. Mm -hmm. And whether Blizzard's going to be like, oh, give you a little bit more time to figure this out before I step in. You know what I mean? Right. And see what happens. I'm very curious to see that situation uh, the next time it comes across. I think it'll be very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, no voice packs, no war chest, which is the one that really bugs me. Mm -hmm. Like, just re maybe reuse the existing... Well, I guess part of the war chest stuff was rewards. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. You did have people to create skins and comics and mm -hmm. stuff that people wanted the war chest for. But I honestly think if they were just like, look, buy the war chest, 
here's a way for you to support StarCraft by playing StarCraft. No, you don't get anything cool. Just do it for the game. I think people would still be on board with that. I think making portraits is the easiest fucking thing in the world to do. And they could do <laughs> Fair. war chest portraits and people would buy it. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. You pay 30 bucks, it goes to esports, and you get, you know, a new portrait. It doesn't even have to be like, you know, uh, Nicholas something or other. He did all the really cool artwork for the BlizzCon portraits for all the players. Right. Yeah. You don't even need that. Just take photos of the players. People will buy it. <laughs> or even take photos and run them through some free filter on the iPhone. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You could totally <laughs> do that, and it would look artsy, and people would be down with it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. So, yeah, so along those lines, I wish they'd kept the war chest. I think it was a good way to get the community involved with the competitive side of StarCraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's not too late. Like, I don't think I don't think it's too late for them to be like, we actually are going to do war chest this season, you know. So I don't know. We'll see. I can keep my hopes up at least. Fingers crossed. Yeah. There's nothing about this that's set in stone. They can change their mind about any of it at any time, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, sure. Huh. Hmm. So, interesting, interesting time to be a StarCraft II fan for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but going back to the whole, it, the game feels fairly balanced right now. If we get into the GSL results, yeah, some people played some games, some people won, some people lost bets, some people yeah. did all of those things. Yes. Yeah. Funny. So how we got happens. the quarter. We got the quarterfinals done of GSL season three, twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Had four great matchups. Uh, mm. Three of them were pretty hard fought. One was a raffle stomp. Um, yep. And to put a bow on it, yes, the player that I picked got 3 0'd and no one else got 3 0'd. So I just feel <laughs> like I'm cursing these players, Somicron. I don't know what it is. Innovation I picked got 3 0'd when I picked him. Here, he wins two games at least. No, he didn't move on, but like he didn't embarrass himself. There was a point at which we thought I was cursing Maru. Yes, there was. Uh, so you'll get over it because picking players has no effect on the outcomes of the games because curse is not real. So can we go back into the archives and determine when the last time was that I won one of these bets? I mean, was it 2019, Somicron? Was it a long time ago? Correlation is not causation, and you know this. I'm aware of it. Don't try but to pretend. There is there's still a part of me where I'm really sad that Dong Regu would have performed well otherwise, except I screwed him over by picking him in this stupid podcast bet. How dare you call it stupid? I uh, like Dong Regu. I don't want him to suffer. I don't want him to get 3 0 by TY. That's not fun. Right, but you picking him to win did not cause him to get 3 0 by TY. Hmm. Right. I mean, like you, I don't understand, think it's, you understand. I don't that, think it's right? direct. I just said that. I don't think it's directly responsible. It's not even it's, remotely responsible. It's a it's a concerning trend. Is all the only is. way it's responsible is that DRG listens to this show and was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna tank just to screw with them." Right. That's the only way that could have happened. And DRG does not listen to the show. You know what the alternative is? Ty was listening and he was like, "Ah, oh, that Falcon guy. He thinks Don Regu is gonna beat me. Screw him." And he trained really hard and had a really solid mindset and just came into that series totally prepared, had scouted Dong Regu up and down and knew everything he was going to do and just crushed him. And otherwise, he wouldn't have. I mean, I mean, do you, do you feel like <laughs> T.Y. before this was going to be like, eh, I'll do it on the day, right? <laughs> like, that's his approach to practicing Kinda? for GSL. Sure, why not? Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll yeah. see what happens. I think he trained really hard, and then you picked Dong Raker. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, also moving on is stats from Stats and Innovation. Mm -hmm. Reverse sweep, by the way. Yeah. Yes, it he was. He was down two games to zero against Innovation and then won three in a row, which, dang, son, that's not easy. Yeah, no. Whew. Then you have Armani and Zest. Amani, I would say, was not favored here. No, no. We looked this over and we said, good on you, Armani, making it to the quarterfinal. Way to go, young Zerg. You'll mm -hmm. have your day, but today is not that day. And then he totally uh, made it through. I mean, it was close. It was a 3-2 against Zest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
There, what was the one? There, we watched that one. Armani did something really stupid. Oh, is that the one where he made Broodlords? Uh, he did I, something that I was like, why is he doing this? And then he lost. Um, Might have been he made a bunch of Broodlords against Zest when he was sky tossing. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Maybe. I mean, it didn't make a difference in the final result, obviously, because he won three games to two. But one of the right. games he dropped, I was just like, what is wrong? Seriously, what is going on here? Right. Anyway. Yeah, so good man Armani. Uh, I think Zest did beat him with an adept resonating glaive all in. The adept printer go burr. The adept printer go burr. And I, and when I saw that was happening, I was like, there's no way. you No, Protoss can't win with this in, now in October of 2020. That's stupid. And then he totally did. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> I believe that was uh, hmm. Submarine, that map. Yeah. So I was looking it's, at it. I'm it's like, a good map. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let it be known, professional Zerg players can get beat by the Adept Printer Go Burr build even now, which is whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then Maru looked incredibly dominant. He recently, I mean, look, he recently won this whole, uh, what was it, King of Battles tournament. Mm -hmm. Looked fantastic there. And then he 3-1 Trap here looking, again, really good. Like, as we know, Maru at his best looks ridiculously elite. Mm -hmm. And at his worst... Loses to Mio Mika. So that's it. We I just mean, don't know who we're going to get. A little unfair to say that now that Mio Mika is number one on the NA ladder. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes he will lose to the best player in NA. <laughs> still still, a, still a disappointed look. <laughs> uh, Mio Mika, if you're watching this, I love you, man. But like, we got to improve the overall competition in NA before we can really start talking smack. Mio Mika is Vietnamese, I believe. Uh, sure. But I mean, has is whatever in ethnicity like whatever he's not right but i'm just saying mio micro does not typically play the na ladder i believe oh oh why is he considered an na player he's not <laughs> he's considered, considered an asian player okay and yet he, you yet it, him. recent no 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 i didn't call him an na player i said he was oh. number one on the na ladder oh right you that's true yeah. you did say that Good point. Good point. Yeah. All right. Anyway, the point being, Mario looks really locked in <laughs> and super terrifying. Mm -hmm. And the way he's playing, I would not be shocked if he ended up winning the Soul GSL. So, it's true. Armani's going to have his uh, task cut out for him. TY stats is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we are no, I mean, one Zerg, man. One Zerg making it through. Saying the time of the Zerg, it has passed. This is time. The time of ZVZ finals is just not really a thing right now. This is, well, I mean, that's not a bad thing, right? No, I'm mean, not saying it's bad. I'm just saying things are changing. For a while there, it was like ZVZ finals. That's our life and our lot. It's true. Um, I just don't think it's right to complain about there only being one Zerg in the semifinals, given that that's... It's that's how it should be? Well, it's not necessarily how it should be, but at least one. If there were none, sure... If there were four, also a problem, right? Like, we're on the decent side of, spec of the spectrum. We are. We're not bemoaning the entire absence of Zerg in the playoff in, at all. Very true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yes. Awesome. All right. So, uh, as a result, I think we talked about this last week. The, did we talk about it last week or one of the streams? I don't know when we talked to each other at all. I can't keep conversations straight. Do we talk about it on the pod? What the punishment would be? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can mention, you're going to eat some Popeyes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a little backstory here. Uh, Popeyes came to town, came to Utah like three, four years ago. And everybody was like, Popeyes, holy smokes. They have the best chicken. And I was like, all right, let's go. So we went a couple times just during lunch when, you know, I was in an office and not working from home every day for the last months. And uh, we went and I was like, this is dry and kind of gross. I don't like this chicken. And the sides were like, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I said, why? And then we went back and I tried it again because I believed in giving places a second chance. And same result. So I haven't been. And our little lunch group had had a situation where everybody could veto one place. So everybody had one mm -hmm. place. They would not go and nobody, you know, the group would not go there, period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I vetoed Popeye's. So that's how strongly I felt about this. So as a result, uh, the loss means I'm eating some spicy Popeye's chicken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I got the side of red beans and rice, which I thought was gross the last time I had it. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I got a Hawaiian punch because that was the worst option of the available drinks. I Mm. I don't like Hawaiian punch. I never get it as Mm -hmm, an option. mm -hmm. That's fair. I don't think we even have it here. Yeah, it's just a like artificial red drink. (laughs) Hawaiian punch. I don't think it's supposed to have a flavor. It's just red. It's red flavored. Like you said, Hawaiian punch to me. I pictured a yellow drink. I don't know why. Maybe it's because Hawaiian pizza, like it's distinguishing feature is pineapple so i figured yellow but no it's red hawaiian punch yeah is no red it, it would make total sense if hawaiian punch was pineapple soda hmm yeah it's a good point oh. anyway there's also a roll which is good so i can't do anything about that i'm sorry but <laughs> here it is it comes in this box it has a chicken on it mm, i can see that obviously um we're gonna open it and i mean it looks fairly innocuous you just got your chicken in here there's the biscuit on top there's a container of red beans and rice down here that is actually a scone yes we've had this discussion it was one of the earliest like right what do you call this food discussions we've ever had right 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 yeah yeah no (laughs) but like you guys been calling them biscuits right and yeah i'm I'm just been letting it go right yeah but yeah who the fuck eats scones with chicken? Like, we eat scones with cream and jam, right? It's like a, a brunch thing with Nana, right? That <laughs> sounds good. Like, I'd eat it with that as well, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's nobody, versatile. Nobody here is, like, having fast food with scones. It comes little... with a little butter container, too. Jesus. It's called whipped butter cup. Um, it contains milk it says <laughs> <laughs> so that's good to know and this little like reconstituted it's called honey sauce honey sauce. but i don't believe it's actually honey okay or they would call it honey right Let's right see. it's like chicken wings spelt with a it's y like <laughs> corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup and sugar and fructose and mm. all four different kinds of sugar we anyway. should point out we are not sponsored by Popeye's Chicken because this man is no. going to be very unhappy with her food in a minute. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't say no to a podcast sponsor, but uh, yeah, definitely not sponsoring the podcast today. Please do not go there because it was featured on the pod and I'm not going to enjoy this. So mm. here we go. Uh, dang, this is really big. Uh, like sometimes, <laughs> look. You know, last time I got it, they were smaller. Look how big this thing is. It's like a freaking <laughs> breast of chicken. It's Don't supposed worry. to be like you, strips, man. You've got you know forty minutes to work your way through it. It's fine. It's very true. Yeah. Bone in this? I do not remember there being bone in this last time. What the heck is going on? Yeah. Either way, here bones. it is. Kind of like a dark chicken mm-hmm. bone in it, apparently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <sighs> and yeah, it's just, oh my gosh, it's just not, I don't know what it is. I've never had chicken that looks like this and is so gross before. I don't know how. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> oh, good. My one is done. I actually haven't swallowed the whole thing. Hold on. <clears throat> Blah. All right. So we'll continue going through this. I'll make sounds of discontent as we move. Um, uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. 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 So because we were talking about this in Discord a little bit before the pod, mm-hmm. Alexandria something Cortez, otherwise known as AOC. Uh, yeah. Did I? Am my camera out of focus now? What happened? Yeah, probably because you kept pushing things towards the lens. Uh, Come back. Sometimes that fixes it. Nah, it's fine. We'll deal. Like It'll fix water. It's Whatever, it's fine. Okay. Yep. All right. So, sitting congressperson for some New York district um, is playing Among Us on Twitch right now. So, if you want to abandon us and go watch her do that, mm-hmm. Ocasio, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Thank you, Aki. Mm. I mean, that sounds like a name out of Pirates of the Caribbean. It right? kind of does. Yeah. It's a great name. It's really recognizable. It uh-huh. rolls kind of well, I think. Honestly, I'm surprised somebody found any username that was just three letters. Like, she's at OAC on Twitter. Right? Like, how AOC. do you... Yeah. 
How, yeah. how, how do you get just three letters? How are they not all taken? <laughs> you can buy it, right? Oh, against their... You figure, uh, out, you figure out who owns it, and then you just yeah. buy it off them. Although, that's honestly... Against, that's against terms of service. Is it? I think buying accounts, yes. Really? I don't think you. I don't think you can sell your Twitter account. But we talked. Well, hmm. that's interesting. Why wouldn't you be able to? I can't understand why that would be against. Oh, that's so bad. Sorry, I just had some Hawaiian bunch. It's probably been like ten years <laughs> since I've had this. Like I forgot uh, how. Hmm. I don't know, but I, I googled right. it. You cannot sell Twitter accounts. Um, Oh, so, but if somebody gifted it to her, that'd be okay? I, I don't know. Because <laughs> we talked about this. Like, the person that owns... Was it you or Duddles? It's me. At Somicron is... Yeah, like, it's at Somicron is a dead account. Right. Like, not just dead, banned. <laughs> like, so killed. It's, yeah. So, in that case... Okay, so it's a special case, then, where it's been banned. Like, if you approach Twitter and said, hey... This account's mm -hmm. toast. Can I have it? I promise I won't do things to get banned. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. What's the reasoning behind you can't sell your Twitter account? I don't... I really don't understand that. Don't know. Okay. I mean, they probably don't want people buying, you know, followers and stuff like that. They don't they want to crack down on that, I imagine. That I understand. If you're buying followers, sure, correct. Like, shut that down. Right, but, but you could buy like, an account with lots of followers. Then what's the difference? Yeah, but if you stop, but like, if you buy an account that has a ton of followers, but then start doing your own stuff on it, people are going to drop off. Like, the reason they're following this account is probably for reasons different than what you want it for. I mean, right? it depends on the reason which you want it, right? Like, if you want an account that like, let's say you're a news corporation and you want an account that is at, um, who's a rich asshole? Who's the guy that owns, um, Amazon again? Bezos? Just Bezos, yeah. Like, if you could buy at Bezos and it has 100 million followers, it doesn't matter if they're all about to leave. You just make a couple posts and then you can report that the Jeff Bezos account, which appears to be legitimate because of the uh, following that it has, you know, that's all yeah. it takes. You want to get rid of that uh, possibility? Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Mm, and it would encourage squatting. I just, I don't know. I like free exchange of goods, personally. <laughs> I just like the idea that you can... Twitter, Twitter accounts are not goods. Unless you're Twitter. <laughs> they're not meant to be bought and traded and sold. And they're a private entity, more or less. Right. I mean, yeah. everything on there is public, but um, if they want to say you can't buy and sell, then I guess that's up to them. Yeah. No, I'm not saying they shouldn't be able to. I just, I don't know. I understand the reasonings behind it, but on a case-by-case -case basis, like especially this one, where the account's been banned, it doesn't have 80 million followers. What's the harm if you take it, right? Um. Yeah. Can't I mean, pick a one. Depends on what the account did, right? Like, hmm. if the account was <laughs> selling weapons of mass destruction to the Middle East, and then it was suddenly reactive, I might get a lot of people being like, hey, can I buy some stuff? God, I keep going to the drink being like, I need some drink. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> it was a trick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if your Twitter account, if like, not your Twitter account, but if Somicron, the actual Twitter account, was caught up in, like, child trafficking or something, it'd be like, hmm. Yeah. You don't want that account. Good mm -hmm. call. Yeah. Good call. <sighs> All right. So the question we had, I had, was, is this our fellow kids type stuff? Well, is see, going on to Twitch and playing Among Us with the express purpose of getting people out to vote implied to vote for her, right, and fellow Democrats. Uh, is that a fellow kid's behavior? She see, is 31. She doesn't look 31, but she's 31. Let's keep that in mind. I. So when I picture fellow kids moments, right, Okay. it yeah. is... Uh, who's the guy? Um, who's the guy from the meme? Uh, he's wearing the, the shit. Fellow got, kids meme? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, <sighs> St 
to Google it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. You've got grease all over your fingers. Mm hmm. He's on Boardwalk Empire, and he's in Billy Madison, and that's an episode of 30 Rock that he's in. Uh -huh. He's all over the place. Yeah. He's, who is it? Who is it? No, I'm not whitelisting you. Uh, Steve Buscemi. 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 God, Steve Buscemi. Not a common name. Yes. No. Okay. He is old, right? Yes. Super old. Like, the difference between him and kids is greater than 31 years. So, so here's the thing. Even though he's young, he kind of looked like that. Okay. I think you're conflating old with ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some overlap. So how old is Steve Buscemi? You can't search for Steve B without Steve Batten coming up. Um, yeah, he, I mean, he's currently 62. 62, right? And so even if we take off 15 years, let's, let's pretend that that meme started 15 years ago. He's still 40 or 30 years older than the kids, right? That is what yeah. I'm conflating. Uh, not conflating. I'm saying that the fellow kids, there's an aspect of you can't be the age at which people actually do the thing, right? And people who are 31 play video games. See, I've always figured fellow kids is more of a, especially for the subreddit, is corporate behavior intending to get in on... Stuff popular with kids mm -hmm. in an attempt to boost your whatever you're aiming for and doing it poorly. That's the other thing. Right. I'm not, like I'm sometimes not. somebody will post something on fellow kids where it's like they use this meme correctly. Like, I understand you don't like it, but this is right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard for me to really see it. I really see exemplary fellow kids as they misused a meme horribly in an attempt to get into the young demographic. And that's amazing mm -hmm. stuff. Right, but the thing trying to get into the demographic needs to be separate from it originally. If it's so already, you don't, if, it, if it's mm, perfect, if it I fits think... perfectly into the demographic, then it's not fellow kids; it's fellow people. I think a thirty-one-year-old shouldn't be playing video games. Not in the no, it's not in the target demographic. It's not in the meme demographic. I don't mm -hmm. like. Okay, I'm thirty-eight. I'm an old man. Mm -hmm. I am not part of that world. I understand it because I know too much about it because I waste time there. But it's not me. It's not my stuff. Right? I, uh, I think it largely is. Hmm. Right? I don't know. I, well, and especially ever since memes are getting more surreal these days, I just get lost more often than not. <laughs> well, that's like some lost. of the stuff. Yeah, but some of the kids posting in my own memes channel on the Discord. I'm just like, okay, I get what this is, and I get why it's a meme, but, like, we are jumping off the edge into just something here, and I don't know what it is. Uh-huh. We'll come back around, maybe. There's a reason I've got that uh, muted. Uh, oh, you do? There's some yeah. good stuff in there sometimes. Sure. Like, I just put a video in that somebody did about how to use a nuclear missile <laughs> to win a game of chess. It's fantastic. Uh huh. Anyway, I'll key ask what's the average age of meme posters and meme for memers? I I mean, here's the thing: I do not take census of how old people are. Mm hmm. But I assume the kids that are posting the like deep fried stuff and the really nihilistic stuff are younger. Mm -hmm. Like younger mm -hmm. than twenty five for sure. Mm hmm. Babies, like basically. Yeah. Yeah. I would say younger than 20, probably. Probably. It makes sense. The track. Anyway. Uh, so you don't think a sitting congressperson playing Among Us on Twitch with the intent to drive voters to come to the polls is fellow kids' behavior. But you're saying if it was a 65-year-old congressperson, yes. But a 31-year-old can get away with it. Yes. Okay. Interesting. I mean... I wouldn't use the phrase get away with it. I still don't think it's necessarily great behavior to see from a congressperson, right? Okay. I just don't think it fits fellow kids, right? Like, it's not on the level, but it's not fellow kids either. Okay. So you inherently distrust it, but it's not a fellow kids thing. Mm-hmm. 
Got it. Dude, this is okay. So this is red beans and rice. Uh, where's the beans? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> it's like, okay, maybe they meant refried beans because this is just like a goop down here. The rice is recognizable, but it's just like goopy goop. Uh, Go on. Have a big bite. I'm doing it. Shut up. <laughs> I'll take a bigger bite as I want. Um, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. I'm sorry. I'm talking with my mouth open. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ah, oh. It like moved into a burning, a like a burned after. I don't want to eat that whole thing. I really don't. <laughs> you have to. You know how like food from fancy restaurants, you'll see this on TV and they'll be like, oh, yes, this has an undertone of this. Oh, and then the flavor more turns into something else. Mm -hmm. This, like, starts out kind of bland and then turns into this is burned. So, like... Uh, I know. Popeye is, is actually probably losing customers because of this. I mean, In 30 we years, will gaming be seen as a kid's thing? Hmm. Yes. Well, it can be seen as four kids, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't think... Here's don't the think, thing. I don't think they're going to move away from that demographic. Because kids have time. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, the older Reddit gets, and the older some of these communities that have been gamers their whole lives get, mm -hmm. it's like, man, I used to play every game when it came out. I would spend entire weekends getting through games. And now I have a wife and kids and a mortgage and a full-time job. And, like, sometimes I get 30 minutes on a Thursday night to play something, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's what happens. Gamers morph into adults with responsibilities, and then they're not really gamers anymore. That's, I think... I think that will keep it from truly becoming like, yes, and adults are all about games too because they don't have time. It's a free well, time hobby. I, I I think it might dip in the middle, but I think people who grew up with games, once like the kids leave, right, and it's just their retirement, they're going to be sitting around playing video games again. I think that's what will happen. Yeah, like there's the whole retirement home. We'll just be playing Counter-Strike together. Right. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. the retirement age. Mm-hmm. I do. I love those memes. Have you seen the ones where it's an old lady getting pushed in a wheelchair by like a healthcare, you know, professional, and she's then the old lady's just like speaking in memes, just like very specific 2020 memes, just like that boy type stuff, right? Right. No, I've not seen this. <laughs> I'll have to send you one. And the person pushing the wheelchair is always like, "That's that's not that's like let's get you inside for your medication." Like nobody understands what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. It always makes me laugh. I'll find you one. Thank you. Anywho, so I found a life hack. If I swallow the red beans and rice fast enough, then the burning doesn't happen. No, no, no. You're not allowed to avoid the taste. Come I, on. You didn't say I had to do it a specific way. I just had to eat it. I'm eating it. Next time I will specify you must chew it for at least 30 seconds. I will not be here next time. <laughs> Are you really not going to bet? I don't know, man. I'm a little <sighs> gun shy right now. God. You, you want to double down on this uh, semifinals? Uh, hmm. Blah. No. Come on, take Amani. He's the Zerk. He's only going up against Maru. That'll go well. Come on, he'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? You have to eat more he Popeyes? Gets, he gets 3 owed. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't know this was a bet. <laughs> like he showed up late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is a GSL bet that I'm paying off right now. You're like, why is he eating stuff that he hates? What is going on here? Uh, Falcon doesn't seem like a total masochist. It sounds like Aki didn't watch last week's episode of the podcast. I guess not. That's okay. Yeah. Totally fine. <laughs> All right. So what else? Uh, ooh, we need to talk about the uh, Glasslands trilogy. I finished up the last book. Can I just say the last book's title is impossible to remember? Model Do you remember dictata. what it is? What? Model, model Dictata. Okay, model you're, dictata. yes. Your brain is incredible. Well done. <laughs> uh, well, like, come on. Model nice Dictata is like Latin or something. How am I supposed to remember that? I don't know. Latin's a real language, so learning the, uh, not a dead language, I should say. So remembering right. the words is not that hard when you, I don't know, see it often. I have a Latin, I, I have a Latin brother. I have a brother who teaches Latin. So, I don't know, maybe I just have I a higher, higher exposure to it than you do. 
That actually makes a lot of sense. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, anyway, man, man, it's so good. Sort of like, hey, remember how we just kind of casually dropped on you that uh, the Spartan 2s were kidnapped from their homes mm -hmm. and then replaced with clones mm -hmm. of their children and then the clones died of horrible organ failure like weeks later? Mm -hmm. And we're like, that's that's really bad. That's mm -hmm. a morally wrong thing to do. Uh -huh. And book three is like, hey, here's a microscope. I need you to take a really close and personal look at this thing. <laughs> Yes. Because I don't think you get what we were telling you. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a lot of like negativity around surrounding these books. Um, overall, uh, what would you say? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I love them. But I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're reading this because you're a Halo fan, mm -hmm. there's like one firefight. <laughs> <laughs> there's like one time a Spartan is fighting some aliens that's it man the whole yeah. 400 pages uh-huh the rest of it if they weren't talking about sangheili and spartans and stuff you would never know this was a halo book yeah which like karen travis i understand what you're doing here they gave you this franchise and you were like i'm i'm gonna do my own thing with like halo trappings and it'll be fine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah okay it's, like is that the complaint that people have about it because i think it's great no, <laughs> that is not oh. generally the complaint. The what are they mad about? The, the complaint is generally that they just kept like banging away about how Halsey's a bitch. And, like, that's all oh. Karen Travis keeps coming back to is like, all the crew hate her. Right. Let's, uh, let's yes. just get back and, you know, talk about that some more, which is fair if you think it comes up too often. But, but like, she's central like, figure. all the crew hates her. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Right, it'd be so much. It'd be annoying if it the people just randomly had conversations about why they hate Halsley. Mm -hmm. Like we get it, we understand, but the fact that we keep interspersing it with like, here's a very detailed first person view of a loving, doting father losing his child mm -hmm. for forty eight hours, thinking mm -hmm. she's been raped and murdered on the side of the street, and they can't even find a body. Mm -hmm. Two getting something returned to him that is very clearly not his daughter mm -hmm. to this thing dying slowly and in agony over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. And then your wife committing suicide over it. <laughs> yep. Fun touch. And Halsley's like, we're doing this for the good of mankind. And everyone's like, no, nope. <laughs> I know. So I really like these books. I think they're great. Yes. Uh -huh. Um, even from a Halo perspective, because do you know what the pre-order bonus for Halo Reach was? This book? No, not this book. This book came out oh. after Halo Reach, before Halo 4, right? Of setting oh. up the events of Halo 4. Halo Reach came with some statues and another thing, which I'll just grab. Oh, this which is Halsley's journal. It came with Halsley's <laughs> journal? Halsley's journal. I have. Holy crap. Halsley's journal. They're like, uh, Halo fans, do you love the Master Chief? Let me show you how screwed up the program that created him truly is. Exactly. And <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, amazing. Yeah. And it, the books entirely recontextualize how yeah. to read this book, right? <laughs> Yeah. It reads oh, very oh, differently the, now. The Glasslands trilogy recontextualizes the this. journal. Yes, because okay. at first, because before this, it was like, yeah, Halsley did some bad stuff, but she pr made the Spartan program, which is the protagonist, which are cool, because video games are awesome. So when they're selling this book to, you know, me when I was ooh, 15, um, I was super into it because it's like, wow, I've got Halsley's journal. She documented and detailed all the information about the Spartans that aren't in the games. It's awesome. And now I am holding war crimes. This is Hitler's personal <laughs> journal, right? Yes, I'm holding Halsley's Mein Kampf. <laughs> so that's that, interesting. That's, am that's amazing. I wonder whose idea that was. Like, who I have no so idea. Okay, so if you read the journal, are there little inklings you're like, mm, 
It's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. Is there like oh, anything where this seems wrong? Or is the journal... Because like the way they talk about the journal in the Mortal Dictata is that it's her rationalizing everything she did. Right? There's a lot of rationalizing everything she did. And there's okay. a lot of like technical details and stuff about like their augmentations and things like that. And yeah. then there's some drawings and some pictures. And there's actually pages missing, which um, oh. I don't think I ever worked out where they went. Like Damn, the, yeah. they're designed to be missing. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. I mean, is there like a educated guess as to what's on those pages? I don't know. I I know I have looked it up, but I've not. I don't remember it because I think it turns out it wasn't that interesting or something. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Okay. But I, yeah. I mean, there's just like. Naomi has these memories of being like, where's my dad? I want my dad. What's going on? And Halsley being like, you know, you know, your your dad gave you up. He mm -hmm. wanted you to be in this program to save humanity. It's like, well, you bitch. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Man. Yeah. yeah. And then how, like, she goes from this incredibly precocious, curious, vibrant six-year-old to, like, this totally emotionally shut down, repressed, Soldier, which is what their goal was. That's what they were going for. But it's so sad. Mm. Uh, uh, it was brutal, man. Yep. And then, and then the genius stroke of being like, and her father turned into a terrorist who mm. hates the government for what it did to his family. And you know what? It's entirely justified. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yep. It's good. It's really good. Um, <sighs> man, I mean, honestly, like the scene where they finally meet mm -hmm. and like everybody thinks he's nuts. Everybody thinks, what? like, come on. Like, you really think your daughter was kidnapped mm -hmm. you and know, cloned and sent back to you. And then well, that's ridiculous. For, for what? Man. what, for what? Like, yeah. I mean, what would they, what, what would they need a six year old girl for? Come on. Conspiracy theorists. You're right. a crazy person. And he knows, like, he knows he's right, but it's hard to be, because he found another parent who had the same thing happen to them. Yes. And they were able to track down more. So they know this is not a one-time event. It's a program. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, even his own direct family, he remarried and had kids and stuff. And even they're like, you're a crazy person. Please don't obsess about this. Mm-hmm. It's not good for you, which, I don't know, maybe fair. But then for him to be like, holy crap, it's my daughter. She's not dead and she's right here. I was just like, bruh. <laughs> and poor Naomi doesn't remember him at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like part of it is she's six. Part of it is they uh, part of the augmentations and all the brainwashing and everything that happened. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that made me definitely remember that I hadn't read this book is... I was still curious as I was nearing the end as to where BB came from. And if yeah. they, they touched yeah. on that a couple times. Yeah. Uh, and then I got to like the epilogue and it summed up in like a page. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Which was like this great big mystery. Here's four paragraphs. Yeah. Which yep. honestly kind of nailed it. Right. Like that's what you need for BB. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's again, just people were awful in this program and it happened not just at a single level but throughout it's every level of the the program right like people it's who easy to be like it. yeah mm. it's easy to be like Halsley authorized and made all this happen by herself mm -hmm. that's one thing but to realize that thousands and thousands of people had to be complicit with it mm -hmm. brutal and the other thing, too, I love the moment when the dad is, you know, meeting with Naomi. And they're telling him everything. Mm -hmm. They're like, look, this is classified. We probably shouldn't tell you this stuff. Mm -hmm. But here's how it went down. Mm -hmm. And then he's, like, counting backwards. And he's like, so hold on. <laughs> you took her when she was six. Yeah. That was years before the Covenant showed up. Did you know they were coming and didn't tell us? And they're like... 
no, no, no. One knew. <laughs> no, he's I like, didn't. so. And they're like, we were using them against colonists, and he's like, you were, you were kidnapping colonist children to mm -hmm. fight against colonies. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! Yeah, incredible. Good times. Blah. And then, I mean, there's the whole other line of um, storyline of a Covenant battle cruiser. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The Pious Inquis uh, Inquisitor. Yeah. Pious Was Inquisition. It, it kind of gets nicked by a... Uh, I can never remember the chicken name. The Kigya. Kigya. It was in that book a hundred thousand times, and I still can't remember it. That's fine. But the Kigya, like, one of them is tasked with taking it somewhere else... Mm -hmm. by an elite it's just like stuff happens in war and like steals it <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah it's just like wow he, gutsy he was, man he was asked to deliver it to a war zone and was not paid yeah. to do extra so he just didn't <laughs> you know old sav fell cheeky old yeah. But they really, I mean, she does a really good job of being like, that's how this civilization is, man. They mm -hmm. are upper, they're basically Ferengi. What? Uh, sorry, Star Trek reference. Ferengi. It's a species, well, maybe not. Like, Ferengi are obsessed with the accu accumulation of wealth. Whereas the Kigyar are more about stuff, right? I mean, it, there's stuff a, is di wealth. There's a difference there. Stuff can't be yeah. wealth. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So yeah. So um, the Sunghili are trying to recover it. Uh, mm -hmm. Telcom, religious nut job Sunghili uh -huh. wants it back. Uh huh. Aren't you just annoyed that there's a bunch of plot lines that go absolutely nowhere by the end of it? Where it's yeah. like, what happened with Telcam? No clue. What happened with uh, um, the Arbiter? Like, did he win the war? Like, how's that going? What happened with... Um... To the dude that they took prisoner, he escaped. Yeah. And then, like, it seemed like he was going to do a bunch of stuff in this book, and he never did. Nothing. Yep. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Not one thing. Want to wanna see where he ends up? Play Halo 4 and 5, I guess. Oh, okay. I guess we can do that. Yeah, well, I mean, Halo 4 we're definitely going to play, because that should be coming to the Master Chief Collection soon. Yeah. Still no word on Halo 5. So that's okay. cool. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> But while, yeah. but while Sorry, we're speaking of good. books, mm -hmm. I finished uh, book two of the Dresden Files, Full Moon. Oh, yeah, okay. Boy, was that boring. Like, Aww, compared to the bummer. first book, that sucked. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Like, the magic was not even interesting. He just kind of does some stuff, and then it turns out that there's werewolves. <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> yes. That's fair. I'm not. It's not my favorite one for sure. Yeah. No. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to figure out if it might be better for you just to like read the Wikipedia synopses of the next couple books and then kind of pick it up. Really? Maybe. Hmm. Like, if you're bored out of your skull by full moon, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't right. Like, I wasn't bored out of my skull. I just found itself very oh. hard to like stick with it for any period of time longer than like two pages which is pretty oh. much bored out of my mind yeah that's what i said okay yeah <laughs> now, that I, now that i think about it you know what grave perils interesting i like summer night quite a bit that's okay. four okay okay i'll stick with it for the next couple of ones Okay, Summer Night just does a really good job setting up some really important world building stuff for the future. Okay. So like skipping it is not recommended, I guess. Mm, okay. Anyway. Yeah, I'll stick with it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds uh, good. Uh, go cool. and then I did. Sorry, a couple more things in uh, Mortal Dictata. Okay. So. The person that runs Oni? Mm hmm. Margaret Panagoski. Well, ostensibly, like the next up, right? The one who's been tapped. Oh, uh, Saren Osman. Yeah. 
she's like, I never wanted to know what my family was like, but mm. Naomi's whole experience here has kind of made me want to. Mm-hmm. And maybe it'll help me help her, right? Right. So she has BB-8 dig it up. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> it's the saddest, saddest thing. Right. It's it's you're... like the polishing of the turd that is the Spartan 2 program, where it's like, not only did they abduct children, and here's a book about how utterly horrendous this entire thing has been, but it actually made your life a hell of a lot fucking better. <laughs> Because Saren's, Saren's mother was the, the junkie prostitute who oh. was, like, starving her. And That's it's like, she's yeah. uh, in, inarguably in a better position for it now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, this book, the entire book is dedicated she to had, how bad this program was, but you benefit from it. <laughs> she had no chance. Yeah. None, if she doesn't get scooped up by the Spartan program. Yeah. Yeah, it's the line, I almost sent you a screenshot of this line, but it's like, you were starving... Like, you, you you know, your mom got, you got taken away from mom a couple times for neglect and then sent back. Mm-hmm. Your teacher sometimes fed you, but you were just malnourished. And Oni lured you away with a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, is that a thing? Yeah. And yeah. then they're like, and they didn't even bother with a clone. Because <laughs> what's your mom <laughs> care? <laughs> No one's going to go looking for you. You're the child of a crack whore. Yeah. And so then, so I'm like, that's terrible. And my brain's like, yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Terrible. Terrible. Um, I did actually take a screenshot from the book. And uh I put it as my Twitter banner because I love it. It's, I just like pe- to see people wring out what happiness they can out of this life. Because the world's shit, really. Hmm. Which is yeah. BB-8. Not BB-8. Dude, I, it's BB-8. I love Fucking BB-8. It's not so not, much. It's not BB-8. <laughs> it's Star BB. Wars. Yeah. It's just BB, whatever. Black Box, there we go. Yeah, Black Box. I just, like, I want an AI friend like BB so much. Mm-hmm. He's an incredible character. He's fun. He's entertaining. He's introspective. He just helps people the whole time. Yes. Yeah. BB is the best. And then, yeah, it was nice. Like, at the end, they're all... Every AI, every advanced AI like Cortana and like BB have a human brain as its template. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, yeah, this genius, genius dude who worked closely with Halsley and who regretted everything he ever did committed suicide and suggested that his brain be used as a template for a new AI to kind of keep Oni in check. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's another reason. Like, the whole reason that BB hates Halsley so much is because where he came from was a person who hated Halsley and himself so much. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah, BB's amazing. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. I liked when he tried to infiltrate the ship that the Hurragok was protecting. Oh, yeah? And the Hurragok was like, nope. I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> like a little super advanced AI versus engineer moment there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And BB <laughs> sitting there lament- the lamenting the fact that he doesn't have hands. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Like, yeah. And then later, right, he actually gets on the ship because someone plugs him into a port directly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, like they're at this standstill because he can work faster than the Hurricock, but the Hurricock can literally cut systems. Mm-hmm. And so the Hurricock can't do anything, but neither can BB. But good. It's really it's good. good stuff. Yeah. Also, the, uh, the ODSTs that get caught and like tortured. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, that whole thing was amazing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then. Uh, good stuff. And like Vaz so is like. Oh, you're, you know, I've only broken my leg and you've been punching me in the face, but like, I really want to tell you what happened to your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it to save his friend, right? Like, he does. True ODST through and through. Yeah. What's up, Macarius? Mm. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's fantastic. Good stuff. All right. Yeah. So that's that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um,. What else is going on? 
Hmm. I see people on Twitter are freaking out. Well, I don't freaking out, but they're like, hey, there's a new company that's like going to do RTS. Oh, yeah. Frost Frost Giant. Giant. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, how long, because... do, how long do we see a game from them, do you think? Oh, 10 years. <laughs> awesome. At least. I mean, if it's like Blizzard, ex-Blizzard people who want to do things the Blizzard way, mm-hmm. forever. Forever. Okay. It's funny because it seems like these guys are more like the RTS side of Blizzard that escaped. Mm. And Dreamhaven is like the Warcraft side of Blizzard that escaped. Mm-hmm. So... Hmm. I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe the RTS is more Warcraft based than than Star than Star anyway, right? More fantasy Maybe. than science fiction. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, I'm sure they have a lot of attorneys, but before either of those companies make a game, I imagine they're going to have to be pretty far away from any Blizzard properties for sure. Probably. Yeah. They just don't want to invite the potential of a lawsuit. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh But I look forward to seeing what they have. Yeah. No, boy, do not a lot of RTS come out. No. No. Uh. Yeah, and there's a bit of a discussion on that. Uh, on the Pylon, Pylon Show Discord? I can't remember where it was, but... Like, it's just the... The barrier to entry is pretty high. It's like true. being able to sit down and be like, here's all the things I have to know to play this game is so much harder than it is to pick up something like Fortnite where it's like, okay, here's you and you have a gun, shoot stuff, mm-hmm. you know, shoot stuff, build things. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's just harder for kids to pick up is the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's true. All right. I think we're about at time. Mm hmm. Have you finished your meal? I'm no dessert. gone. No desserts until you finish it. Yeah. <clears throat> Man. Did you get through your rice and red beans? Yeah, I just finished it. That was the last one. It's not good. It is not good. Somebody who loves the red rice, like, especially, okay, I can understand maybe liking the chicken. I can understand it conceptually. I do not like it. But whoever likes the red beans and rice, like, please help me understand what you see in this. Because it is not a good side. It is not a good dish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all. Done. Okay. Okay. Uh, sports ball, 10 seconds. The World Series started. It's the Dodgers and the uh, Tampa Bay Rays going at it. And uh, I might watch some of those games because World Series is fun. Done. That's it. That's all the sportsy things. Okay. Cool. Let's wrap up. All right. Wrap up. So that's going to be it from us today. Thanks for hanging out. And, uh, yeah, that was a less than 10 second sports minute. Very true. Aki. Touch. Um, yeah. If you want visual proof that... Falcon actually ate this stuff. Come watch the VOD over at uh, twitch.tv slash Somicron. Mm-hmm. Show us your empty plate. What? Show us your empty plate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh. the biscuit's still in there. The scone is still in there because so you have, I'm going to so eat that. So you haven't finished. Uh. Well, it, the scone is good. Like, it doesn't really count part of the bet. What, what if? I'll what if, eat it. What if it's bad? <laughs> what if I, the one part that you could look forward to ends up being shit? I've never had a biscuit that's terrible before. I don't even know how to do that. I'm going to eat a little bit. It's a biscuit. Like, you can't screw this up. I don't okay. Think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So come check out the VOD. Um, you can hit up the Patreon page for the podcast as well as the store at falconpaladin.store. New merch and until next soon, time. I promise. What? New merch coming soon. New merch coming soon. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. But all right, until next time, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Above all, please take care of yourselves. Goodbye.